You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com You're listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up, are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Wong. Welcome everybody to another episode of Earth Oddity. We thank you so much for joining us, whether you are an onion head devotee, an asparagus prediction. Are you talking about veggie tales? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Prolific streakers alike, we thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah, thank you for being here in 2019 again. Yes. Yeah, I hope everybody had a happy new year, enjoyed their holiday, enjoyed a big-time Bama win since all of our friends are Alabama fans. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're we're glad to have another day. I got a few good stories here. Got a Florida man story for everybody. Got an Oregon man story, Uh-oh. too. Yeah, Oregon, the Florida of the West is uh, yes. what I've been told. So um, we're going to get into both of those here a little bit, but... Uh, we just want to thank everybody again for listening to Earth Oddity, downloading and telling a friend about us and all that. Let's get going here. Do you want me to kick it off? Kick it off. Okay. Well, the first one I'm going to do is about a lady named Jenny. Do you reckon that's how you say her name? <laughs> Janine? Je- it's not Jeanette because I don't think yeah. there's a T in there. No. We're gonna, I'm going to say Jenny. She's uh, French. It's spelled like Jenny C. Riley, who okay. sang Harper Valley PTA. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say Jenny Calmet. World's oldest person ever, Jenny Calmet, may have been a fraud, researchers allege. What? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was a big scandal. <laughs> um, the French woman who holds the title as the world's oldest person may be a fraud, Russian researchers allege. Now, she died in 1997 at the age of 122 years old. Man. That's really old. That is pretty old. My great grandmother lived to be a the world's oldest. So. Yeah, it was, it was the world's oldest. Yeah. My great grandmother lived to be a hundred and two. Okay. So, yeah, I feel like that's you know in my genes. I'll probably live that long because <laughs> I won't be lucky enough to die. However, Nikolai Zak, a mathematician and member of the Society of Naturalists of Moscow University, wrote in his study. This is the title of his study, Janine Calmet, The Secret of Longevity, that he believed the French woman took the identity of her mother. Oh, so that's the secret of longevity. Just steal a birth certificate. (laughs) You just steal someone else's identity. Identity theft. (laughs) (laughs) So he told this uh, French press newspaper that uh, he analyzed biographies, photos, and archives from Arles, the city in southern France where Calmet lived, and determined his conclusion. Valerie Nazavilov supported his research and she's like a uh, or it could be a he you know mm-hmm. Russians will they'll name a dude Valerie in a second <laughs> right he's like a a, a uh, another researcher yeah a, a, a ge- genealogist okay so his work is peer reviewed yes peer reviewed right. right um the analysis of all these documents led me to the conclusion that the daughter of Janine Calment Yvonne took her, the identity of her mother uh, according to an official document, Calgamont's daughter, Yvonne, died of pleurisy in 1934. However, Zach believed the mother, uh, Janine Calvert, died, and Yvonne borrowed the identity of her mother in order to avoid paying the inheritance tax. Oh. So it's tax evasion, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not only like trying to get in the Guinness Book of World Records, but the, it all comes out in the wash. That all just kind of paid out in the end. That's right. Yes. <laughs> this is yeah, about- like a double, <laughs> yeah. an unexpected blessing. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The researchers told the AFP, which is the French uh, you know, news agency, uh, that he always had his doubts about her age and said that Calumet was sitting without support and had no signs of dementia, too. So as Jean-Marie Robin, a French demographer, a demographer and a gerontologist uh, who helped the Guinness Book of World Records on the validity of records regarding her, said uh, he never had any doubts about the authenticity of the documents. Hmm. So now you're getting a challenge, Uh-oh. like, oh, your research is wrong. But, of course, he works for Guinness, so mm-hmm. it could just be that he's like, home team don't make mistakes. Right. Know? 
Anyways, if her record is canceled, Sarah Naus, an American. Yeah. That's right. That's right. USA. 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 (laughs) (laughs) An American will be named the world's oldest person. Naus died in 1999 at the age of 119. And they may name a section of the wall after her. I don't know. (laughs) So... (laughs) But anyways, I just imagine like if at some point in time, if you like assume your mom's identity to get out of a, a tax debt right. that you're going to have, and then it like spirals into you're now the world's <laughs> oldest person, <laughs> you know, like news interviews and everything else. That's got to be something. You Which know? I imagine at that age, you probably don't care. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like well, if I mean, was caught if she in... wasn't 122, she <laughs> yes. was probably like in her 80s or something. But yeah, I would just be like, oh, well, you know. Yeah, that's a good question. How old would Yvonne have been? I don't know. I tell you what, it wouldn't have been 119. No, no. Like the Americans. <laughs> yeah, like the Americans yes, right. do it. Because we do everything better, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's self like health care for all. and uh-huh. uh, But, you know, for the most part, we do everything better. And your stupid little bicycle race. <laughs> <laughs> which we had that for a while. That's right. Yeah, well, Lance Armstrong dominated that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, he was on drugs. But other than that, that was yeah, okay. Well, it turns out that the country of France, they're all squares. And they, don't, right. they don't like performance-enhancing drugs. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he did have one less testicle, too. Yeah. Made him a little lighter or right. more aerodynamic, <laughs> you know? Yes. Nobody ever brings that up. But it had to have an effect, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Lance, uh, that Lance is, he's, he was not the nicest person. Apparently, or he is not the nicest person. I've never met him in real life, but I haven't so either. I've heard. Yeah, but I've heard that. Now, Greg Lamond, do you mm-hmm. know who Greg Lamond is? How do I even know cy- more cyclists outside of that? <laughs> I don't even know where that came from in my brain, but he was like Lance Armstrong before Lance Armstrong was Lance Armstrong. Okay. So, like back, I guess, in the 90s, early 90s, maybe late 80s, he dominated the Tour de France too. Okay. Yeah, which they get hyped up for that bicycle they race. Do. I mean, like super hyped up. Now, of course, we get hyped up for NASCAR, you know, and yeah. so I can see everybody gets off on different things. Well, I don't but. know. I mean, when you take like a stock car racing on a oval track at yes. 200 miles, 200 plus miles yes. an hour and put that next to a bicycle race. Well, I would, it, for me, I mean, as an American, that's right. It doesn't translate. No, but I would say that. And I've, I've been to a NASCAR race. Everyone should go if you haven't been to one because it's, I mean, it's America at its best. <laughs> yeah. uh, America at its worst slash best. Yes, right. <laughs> like unnecessary use of fuel and pollution <laughs> and then drunken debauchery too. <laughs> yeah. But watching cars go in a circle for a few hours, you know, by the end of it, I was just like, okay, I've, had, I've seen this. You know? Well, I feel like a huge part of, the appeal of going to a race is not so much the race as what goes on. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Outside yes. the race. Oh no, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to miss out on the, uh, infield or the campgrounds at mm-hmm. Talladega International Speedway because and the whole thing some started pretty amazing over, things. And the whole thing started over bootleggers. Yes. Racing, racing their cars, cars right. on Sunday afternoon. That's right. When they weren't smuggling moonshine. When they weren't smuggling moonshine. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that the Tour de France has a a similar origin story. Maybe. maybe. Where a bunch of, I don't know, 12-year-olds were arguing over who had the fastest bike. (laughs) I was going to say maybe they were smuggling wine with it being France. In their socks. Yeah, right. They got their berets on. Yeah. They got their berets on. (laughs) Smoking like a cigarette with one of those stems, you know. That's just how I imagine French culture. Yeah. I did take two years of French in high school. So, just so you know, I may be biased towards the French a little bit. Because what better language to learn in rural northwest Alabama but French? Right. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Helps me understand some Cajuns a little bit better. Like, you know, you listen to some Cajun talk, I'll pick up a few words here and there. But, yeah, in general, Mm -hmm. French is pretty useless language to learn. No offense to Leslie if she happens to listen, who I went to high school with and is a French teacher right now. I'm just saying, like, Spanish would have been much more useful to me, you know. But what Because I've run into people who speak Spanish on a weekly basis. Yes. I mean, I owned a restaurant for a while, too, so I learned a lot of Spanish, and I know restaurant Spanish, which is like, you know, <laughs> that's that's about Sweet the Sweet and sour chicken? No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, chili verde is like uh, green pepper and gotcha. all that stuff, you know. But, uh Yeah. I just, I just, I don't know. I got way off of this lady who's a fraud, a <laughs> yes. French fraud, a French fraud. Yeah, uh-huh. who has kept this record out of the hands of America, 
and uh, and hopefully it'll be coming home. Yes. And once again, the Russians are involved. So just thanks, <laughs> thank you, Trump. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> You're making America great again. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're making America great again. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, great because we're not great apparently. But whatever, you know. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Well, let's talk about this next story here. I'll never stop. Prolific streaker has stripped off at 568 events. Okay. All right. 568. <laughs> Are you familiar with the name Mark Roberts? Mark Roberts. Yes. Okay. He, I went to school with a lot of Roberts. <laughs> this one is from the UK and he is a prolific streaker. Okay. And by his own record, by his own accounting, he has stripped off at more than 560 events around the world. 506. He is 53 years old. And I'd he like has to get no the, plans of stopping. I'd like to get the Russians to look at that. Just validate his <laughs> yes. claim. Okay. There might be an American out there who's, <laughs> who's done it a little more. <laughs> Says the father of three who lives in Sefton Park, Liverpool has streaked at major sporting events, including the Super Bowl, which I think I remember that. Yeah, I do. I a do. few years yeah, back. That's right. Yeah. He was on the Rick and Bubba show, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bitty show if you had never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. He is streaked at the Olympics, at the UEFA Champions League fi- final. UEFA, yeah. And Usain Bolt's last 100 meter race. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> I told you my horse's name was Usain Colt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The trouser dropping pitch invader has also stripped off at the dog show Cruffs, the 2011 Excuse Turner me, Prize. I just, I'm sorry, I was hiccup, but uh, the dog show, the dog show, gracious, is there nothing sacred anymore? <laughs> and the Canes Film Festival. Oh goodness, <laughs> Mr. Roberts, who claims to have streaked 568 times across 24 countries, says that only 25 of them have led to an arrest. Okay, All which right. is surprisingly low. Well, it's it's a scientific fact that you run faster when you're naked <laughs> i mean i've i've tested this out myself and uh you do i mean you will you'll pick them up and put them down <laughs> the skin bearing sports lover who works as a painter and decorator insists that he is a true entertainer who likes to create something visual for people to laugh at <laughs> okay i don't know i don't know if they're laughing with you or I mean, at you he really yeah. put some some thought into yeah, that right when he stepped onto the ice in a break during the curling final at the 2006 Winter Olympics in Torino, Mr. Roberts was clutching a mop, had clothes pegs in his ears, and a rubber chicken over his nether regions. <laughs> <laughs> he told Sky News, I pretended to brush the ice and the crowd went nuts. All the skaters were laughing their heads off. I like to make a performance of it. I don't just run out naked and wave. Okay. So he puts a little yeah. thought into what he's oh, going to do while he's, he's streaking. He's a true artist. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Roberts added that the Italian police said they wouldn't charge him if he agreed to leave the country immediately. <laughs> All right. I've had that deal presented to me before. <laughs> Good deal. Okay. Good deal. Yeah, you take that every time. Because <laughs> they didn't say you couldn't come back. Right, yeah. You just <laughs> had to leave. You had to leave right. immediately. Yes. And they're how they going to know when you come back anyways, <laughs> yeah. you know? The exhibition says that he only ever streaks during breaks in the action and he never interrupts play out of respect for the athletes. All right, respect that, yeah. That's uh, respect people have game. trained for years to reach these finals and I fully appreciate that. I'm not out there to scupper their chances or take anything away from them. Mr. Roberts' first streak was at the Hong Kong Sevens Rugby Tournament in 1993. Wow. It was the most liberating experience of my life. Okay. I felt euphoria from running naked in front of 65,000 people. I'm impressed they got 65,000 people at a rugby tournament. Rugby's huge. (laughs) It's big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And knowing that I had the ball to do it. (laughs) The The ball to do it? The bottle. Bottle. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I I thought we were making another Lance Armstrong joke. (laughs) Okay. I assume assume that's a a Liverpool speech. Yeah, probably. We need Sadie to decipher some of this for us. That's why I'm still doing it after 25 years. Mr. Roberts, who has been engaged for four years, says that his fiance Susie, knew what she was getting into before she agreed to marry him. Okay. So... How, four-year engagement seems four, a little long. No, four-year engagement. That's really long. You might want to... Yeah. 
Uh, Miss I mean, Susie. I'm not saying people need to jump into marriage, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, four years at some point, you got to be like, hey, let's just go ahead and sign the document. I mean, I'll do I'll do respect, Miss Susie, but I, you might want to ask him if this is really what he yeah, what he wants. Right. Yeah, <laughs> he said he had three kids too, right? It took his grown up children a little longer to accept their father's right. unconventional pastime. Oh, how, I mean, I embarrass my kids just <laughs> dropping them off at school. You know, that's nothing compared yeah, to this. What if I was running naked in like an <laughs> Alabama football game? He says, when they were teenagers, they would tell me on the telly and stuff that they were saying, Dad, pack it in. <laughs> <laughs> they would say, all my mates see it on TV. Yeah. I would say, well, what do they think? And my kids would simply reply that they love it. Oh, uh, Mr. No, they don't. You're <laughs> well, getting made fun of. If you're well, hanging say, out with me, His you kids are. don't love it, but right. his kids' friends love it nah, because yeah. they're making fun of his yes, kids. Right, yeah, exactly. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Mr. Roberts adds that his daughters, aged 30 and 21, and his son, aged 25, have since become accustomed to his streaking. Oh, no. That's just like daddy's <laughs> got a drinking problem. We don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> now they're older and they love it. Uh, I think they're more not. accustomed to it yeah. than love it. Yeah. They know exactly what it's about. It's just a bit of fun. Mr. Roberts says he used to streak with his genitals exposed okay. but now that he covers them up because the world is less accepting <laughs> all right <laughs> the events that he has buried his skin at include the world swimming championships in barcelona in 1993 the world snooker championships final in oh, 2004 snooker. okay <laughs> the Ryder cup in 2010 mr roberts says none of his previous relationships have suffered because of his unusual hobby and added that if anything they have been enhanced oh <laughs> well, okay. After he had a few successful streaks under his belt, he found himself attracting sponsorship deals. That's right. He does. He gets like a he'll have like a sticker on his back or whatever. How much you think it'd be to get a Earth Oddity sticker? I don't on know. Him? Maybe we need to hit him up. <laughs> I know. You know? Maybe he'll just do us a solid. <laughs> Maybe. Like, look, man, I we love your work. <laughs> you know. Huge fans. Huge fans. <laughs> Probably your biggest fans in America. Definitely your biggest fans in Alabama. <laughs> I just want I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out here. You just let me know where you stand on it. What do we got to do to get an Earth Oddity logo on your butt? That's all we want. Just like yeah. maybe like a download Earth Oddity podcast. <laughs> I mean, we don't really have a lot in way of funds, but we can offer like reciprocal exposure here yeah. on our podcast. So uh, where, where you stand with that, sir? Yeah. I'd just like to see what he'd have to say. Hit us up. Earth yeah. Oddity at, yeah. at planetmail.net. Somebody tell him. Sadie, we're depending on you. Just get in touch with him. Tell yes. us. We just need you to get in touch with a naked man That's in Liverpool. Right. That's right. Yeah, we're not sure. asking much. Like, <laughs> you know, like like Britain's a pretty big country, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, of course, the only person we know we assume we be able to have a contact this Well, guy. it's not as big as America, no, so we just no, assume everybody knows right. each other. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Says the online gambling forum Golden Palace paid him to streak at the UEFA Cup final in Seville in 2003 and the Winter Olympics in Italy in 2006. Ooh, Winter Olympics tough. Mr. Roberts. Quite a bit of shrinkage going on. <laughs> he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to reveal how much he was paid, but he okay. says that he gave all the proceeds to charity. Oh. So man. We are a charity. <laughs> <laughs> Just let's just cut out the middleman. That's here. right. Yeah, I mean, let's do some direct. You ain't got to worry about switching anything and like write offs and taxes and all that. So Golden Palace also sponsored him to carry out perhaps the most daring streak when he made it onto the pitch during the Super Bowl in Texas in 2004. Yeah, that's a tough one. There's a lot of security there. There is. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, who planned to streak for a year, wrote to the NFL and asked them to send him a referee outfit that he would later use to fool security guards. <laughs> so <laughs> he's right in the NFL saying, hey, you need to help me out. Hey, guys, I just want a referee outfit. <laughs> I really love your sport. And my favorite part of your sport, because everybody loves them, are the referees. <laughs> Can I get one of their outfits? <laughs> the dedicated nudist then handed the garment over to a seamstress who alters clothes for him so they are easier to rip off. Oh, yeah. Throw a little Velcro seam <laughs> yeah. on it. I got you. The exhibition is flew out to Texas with a friend, and the pair had front row seats at the Reliant Stadium. Mr. Roberts, who had his tailor-made referee outfit on under his clothes, was able to take onto the field during a break in the game. He said it got to the middle of the football pitch just before the guy's going to kick the ball. 
That's uh, right. I remember. I, do you remember this? Because he yeah. walked out there. Yeah. Like, 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 like he was red. done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and he's blowing his whistle. Mm-hmm. An American footballer said, what's up, ref man? I ripped my clothes off and said, all is wrong, mate. <laughs> and I started to river dance. <laughs> I respect this guy. <laughs> Mr. Roberts then ran down the pitch before he was knocked over by one of the players yeah, and then yeah. carried away by police officers. Yeah. You don't want to run on a football field. Those guys like hit people for a living, you know? <laughs> you know what his, uh, his fine was for doing that, for streaking at I would the say uh, Super Bowl? 50000 Thousand dollars. A thousand dollars is it? I can afford a thousand dollars. I mean, maybe we need to get in this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, if we're gonna just be practical here, <laughs> you have much more surface area than I do, so we can get a bigger logo on you. All right. Well, that's true. I mean, we want this to be seen as many people as possible. So <laughs> if we get a thousand reviews. <laughs> that's, that's right iTunes reviews. <laughs> Streak it a game. We're currently at 50. We only need 950 let's, more. Let's make it happen, guys. <laughs> well, he says that he has appeared in court 11 times. He has been convicted three times. He was handed a small fine after running naked at an event in Matthew Street in the 90s. This article's pretty long. Yeah. So. So he just he's just a professional streaker. He's a professional streaker. Wow. Have you? <laughs> and there's some amazing pictures in this article, by the way. When I was in college, they used to have like a dollar beer night at the minor league at Birmingham Barons games. Mm -hmm. And so I was about $20 in and I, (laughs) I had convinced myself that I could run across the diamond. And if it weren't for a few friends, I probably would have. (laughs) Probably would have tried. Yeah. I wasn't going to streak, but I was just like, man, I think I could get to the other side. You know, I can make it from like the first baseline to the third baseline without anybody really catching me, you know? (laughs) And, uh, luckily I didn't do that. So. I don't uh, even know if they do dollar beer night anymore. They went to quarter know. dogs, like quarter hot dogs, which is really awesome. Much more Baptist than dollar beer night. Mr. Roberts has planned to retire in 2018 oh. and streak for the last time at the World Cup final between France and Croatia in Russia. So I don't know if he did that or not. I don't either. He says he managed to get a ticket and arranged to stay in an apartment in Moscow, but his plan fell flat because he forgot to arrange a visa and enter the country. <laughs> The streaker poor said, I planning. couldn't believe it. How could I have been so stupid? Yeah, poor planning. Poor so, planning. I don't uh, know. I don't know if he's uh, if he's going to remain retired or, or come back out. Right. You know, he's he's in his early 50s. Yeah. And, I mean, heck, that's like 40s nowadays. Yeah, I mean, you're you're still good to go. Yeah. You know? I'm not far off from 50. I don't feel like it. It'll be here before I know it. I mean, granted, you're, you know, you're probably past your prime, but you're not – you're not retirement age yet. Well, what's that country song? I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm good once as I ever was. Yes. So, I mean, you got one left in you somewhere, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. At the NCAA, no, at the college football playoff Yes. this Monday night. Yeah. Look, with Earth Oddity. let's just say um, <laughs> anybody we know out there, if you can manage to streak with an Earth Oddity logo on your person somewhere, <laughs> yes, we will give you a ten dollar Walmart gift card. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna throw that out there. If you can make it happen, and you can come on the show, we'll have you on for an entire episode. Yes, you make that deal. Yeah, let's make that. Let's deal. do it. That's perfect. And, and we'll take you out to dinner. All right, so let's move on to Oregon. Home of Johnny Irons. Yes. This is not him, though. This is not about him, but I hear they're big friends. All right. (laughs) An Oregon man has free Burger King for life, which was given after he was stuck in a restroom, uh, revoked after eating there for 13 of 15 days. Oh, man. Yeah. So 50-year-old Curtis Bonner, uh, no, Bruner, was reportedly verbally offered Burger King for life after being stuck in a restroom for an hour. Huh. I don't know how that happens. I was about to say, okay, um, I feel like free Burger King for life is pretty nice. Yeah, oh yeah. For being stuck in a bathroom for an hour, because an hour doesn't sound like all that long. No, not a not but, a great amount of time, especially if you to, get your smartphone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but to get that and then have it revoked, well, that's kind of... Seems a little shady on Burger King's part. Um, Agreed. Free fast food for life sounds great. Um, well, one more Oregon man is claiming that his local Burger King didn't live up to the promise. 
As per Amy Green of the Oregonian, 50-year-old Portland resident Curtis Bruner has filed a lawsuit seeking $9,026, which is apparently, I guess, the <laughs> as, um, as lifetime as supply lifetime of Burger, Burger King, King. $9,000. Uh, the estimated cost of a Whopper meal a week for the next 22 years. He's only going to live 22 more years? I don't know. Well, he's 50. That would make him 72 in 22 years. Right. So. I think the average, uh, yes, maybe the, like the, the average. average lifespan though, I think is 76. I is think it's it? gone up since then. So. Oh, wow. I don't even know. Dude, you're, you need to raise that up a little bit. <laughs> He's doing this after he got stuck in a Burger King restroom for an hour and it was apparently verbally promised free food for life. Um, and ate there for free for the next 13 days. <laughs> I would have done the same. Me too. <laughs> and then was told by district management, uh, that they had canceled the offer. <laughs> um, according to the lawsuit, Bruner had just finished a meal and stepped into the single-user restroom. When he tried to leave, the lock on the door jammed. After several minutes of trying to get the door open, he called the phone number on his receipt. Several employees responded, responded ultimately handing him uh, a hard plastic edge card and later a fly swatter and instructions to squeeze it through the crack between the door and the door frame to move the locking <laughs> mechanism. Surprise, surprise, Burger King employees know how to pick a lock. <laughs> I'm also thinking, which I know it doesn't say, but if you have your uh, smartphone, you can probably just Google how to yeah, get right. a lock watch and a, get out of there. Watch a YouTube video on it. <laughs> yeah. um, now, here's where my doubts come in. Bruner was too shaken to immediately leave the restaurant. Okay, and, you're putting on a show for the camera, sir. That's when employees gave him a bandage and an oint and some ointment for a cut, and a manager apologized and offered him a verbal promise that he could always eat there for free. She said, yeah, man, we understand it's a terrible situation, <laughs> and we want to make it up to you, Yeah, man. he recounted. Even before the promise, Brunner said he frequented Burger King nearly every day because he enjoys the food, and it's just one freeway stop from his work in Troutdale. Hmm. Um, he said that after the free meal promise, he ate there free every day for the next 13 days, with the exception of December 24th and 25th. Twice he ate breakfast and dinner there on the same day, he said. Huh. Um, so he's coming in hot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. But when he went to Burger King on December 28th, Bruner said he was told district management had yanked the free meal pledge. On one hand, some sympathy for Broner is understandable. He would he wound up stuck in a washroom for over an hour on December fifteenth, which before, is annoying. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if yeah. I would say it's emotionally damaging, I, right. but it is annoying. I don't know that it merits free food for life. You know, <laughs> right. maybe like, hey man, come on back tomorrow. We'll get you a free lunch yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Before a locksmith was finally able to free. And sure, if a restaurant offers you free food and then pulls that back, that's not great. But on the other hand, does having an hour of your time wasted really mean you should get free food for life? Especially if you're planning to take advantage of that every day and twice on some days. It's an interesting lawsuit based on a Whopper meal a week, far less than the amount he was actually consuming. And on an unrelated note, the Oregonians piece mentions Bruner was convicted in 1994 of first-degree sexual abuse and another crime that I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> he was sentenced to almost six and a half years in prison and required to register as an offender, uh, mm -hmm. which he, he says is for life. Uh, while Bruner says those charges are old and that he's been a model citizen since, that still doesn't look make him look great. At any rate, we'll see how Bruner's lawsuit goes. So, so I like to say, first I'm of all. I'm kind of torn on this one because on the one hand, like you said, I don't think being locked in a bathroom for an hour merits right. free food for life. Right. But I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like if you get the deal, free food for life, then, you know, yeah, you the, the business should, you know, should uh, hold that. But now let me say this to anyone out there in the future who may be looking at a free Burger King for life deal, you need get to get that writing. in writing. Exactly. You cannot rely on the yes. managers on a handshake deal on this because that deal is only as well, good as long yeah. as the manager is employed there. So Burger King managers come and go. <laughs> yes. I actually love Burger King. All right. It's probably my favorite fast food restaurant. But the ones here in town are just horrible. Like, the yeah. service is not good. So I never go there. Right. And if I was offered Burger King for life, I would be pumped up. <laughs> yes. You know? 
<laughs> but I don't know that I would like take Go advantage. Every day. Yeah, right. I mean, stretch just, it out. You'll it'll you'll get yeah, more mileage right. on and that I'm, deal. And I don't even know that you know, like once they got me out of the bathroom, and I would have to go sit down and collect myself, or you know, <laughs> yeah. just like. That makes Oregonians look terribly weak. You know? Well, depending on what's going on, I might say, leave me in here a little longer. Right. <laughs> yes, know? right. Hey, put my kids on the playground. I'm just going to hang out in here for a while. <laughs> Wait 45 minutes, then call a the locksmith. Okay, just need a little break. And give me some chicken fries. <laughs> That's right. Can you slide those under the door? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. That's rough. I've been locked in the room before, but uh, it wasn't for an hour. I, I could get out. I got out pretty quickly, but mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a weird feeling when you go to open up a door and it doesn't work, and you're like, "Oh, well, I'm I'm screwed." You know, like, well, how do I get out of here? But I just jiggled it until it came open. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's tough. I'm a pretty big dude, so I can yeah, you just like Hulk can, smash through it. I can get out of of most places. Right. There's some thick old bathroom doors though in a re- fast food restaurant, you know. Granted, if I've uh, if someone ever locks me in a bank vault or something, I don't know if I'll get out right. of that. Well, but a bathroom, right? An elevator. Oh, elevator. Whatever. I feel like if I would have been him, and as soon as they popped the lock on that door and I walked out, I'd been like, "Look, guys, somebody needs to get some Lysol. In there. Don't go in. <laughs> Nobody go in there for a while. All right, we need to let it calm down in there." Light a match or something. Let's get something going in here. <laughs> Try to make it funny, you know. But yeah, yeah, I, I just, you know, I wouldn't say. I'll just say this: as being in the restaurant business, people, all right, food is so relatively cheap, you know, for what it costs to make it. You make all your money right. on drinks and side items and stuff. Your main menu ticket items, profit margin is not huge on. But people will do everything within their power. This is just a general public to get as much free stuff as they can off of. <laughs> yes, they will. I mean, it is like crazy. We have these like little uh, cards uh, that we did with Chom, which is a hands on museum. Mm-hmm. And it was like, bring this card in and you get a free chip and drink with your sandwich. Because we want to support Chom. My kids love Chom. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a great little place here yeah, in town. Yeah, yeah. And That's it, Children's Hands-On yeah, Museum right. for those not native to Tuscaloosa. Yes, right. And we're like, you know, a block from them. Right. Well, people would come in with like 10 folks, and they'd have one card. And they would be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to pass it back to this guy. And I'm like... Well, no, like that's not the spirit of the deal, you know. Like you're taking advantage. Like you bought that car for twenty dollars from Chom, and now you're taking advantage of Chom and me, you know, for of a two dollar and twelve cent discount. Is what all it was. twenty Tax of you should all. have bought a card. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What are y'all trying to do? You know, <laughs> like it. I, I don't want to get too far off on it, <laughs> but if you ever. Or everyone should work in a restaurant that's said pretty often, but it will make you hate humanity, you know? <laughs> like and you do. I, Yeah, like me. Like, I just hate people, yeah? Uh, and that's not the right attitude to have. But, like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not like a class thing or a race thing or anything. It, the richest people in the world will try to get one over on you. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I got this coupon that's been expired for eight months and now you have to honor it because all i the, have it you know all the way down to the right yeah all the, the way down to the crook down to the guy who's going to reach in the tip jar and pull out all the money and <laughs> stick it in his pocket while you're not looking <laughs> had all of it happen it'll make you hate <laughs> people it will it will but anyway so this dude i actually side with burger king on it <laughs> with him. Yeah. you know I mean, yeah, the manager probably shouldn't have done it, but you also shouldn't be hitting it up like <laughs> twice a day. And, you know, the only days you're skipping are Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. When you they're know? closed. Yeah, when they're closed. <laughs> I mean, get real, buddy. Come in once a week. Maybe it'd be cool. You know? Well, it said 13 of 15. He gave them. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I guess Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. That's right. Yeah, he gave them two <laughs> days off. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, man. Well, John, uh, have you ever had asparagus? Uh yeah yeah. Do you like asparagus? I'm not a huge asparagus. I'm fan. not a huge asparagus fan yeah. either. I've tried to act like I like it because yeah. people cook it and they act like it's so good. You know, like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is my spouse. I buttered it up and we grilled it on the grill, and you're just like, okay. But you know, asparagus can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's um a rich source of nutrients and, yeah. and minerals and vitamins that the body needs. Mm-hmm. It can make your pee smell funny. It does. Yes. 
uh, it can teach your kid Bible verses. That's right. On yes. Right. It's one of our saints. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but apparently it can read the future. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, that is amazing. <laughs> World's only asparagus fortune teller makes her 2019 predictions. Okay. World's only. <laughs> yes. Well, I would this like to inform woman. this lady that I'm a asparagus fortune teller, too. <laughs> I, I'd like to go meet her and be like, well, you may not know it, but I'm a fortune teller, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you care to make this day, I'll make I'll a bet with you. you. That's right. <laughs> a woman <laughs> uses asparagus to predict the future has had her say on what 2019 holds for us all. Jamena Packington is the world's only asparagomancer. <laughs> <laughs> Great name. That's, okay, that's, that's heck on a business card. <laughs> that is, is these, that's pretty good marketing. Right that's there. right. Yes. yes. She has used her self-taught skill to remarkably predict events that came true in previous years. She has correctly predicted Brexit, Donald Trump's presidential win, okay. and Emmanuel Macron's election victory. And she even appeared on Big Brother forecasting who would be the next to leave the house. Oh. Now, I'm assuming this is British Big Brother. Yeah, I don't know. Because this is a British, uh, this is express.com. Br- okay. So Dieter was, Dieter was big into Big Brother this year. Okay. This summer, she predicted the England football team, which is soccer mm-hmm. over there. That's right. Not football. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, truly more football than what we call football yeah. since they use their feet but more. But since we're arrogant Americans. Yeah. Right. We just took it over. <laughs> we took it. We're like, we like okay, this <laughs> game of hand egg is now called football. <laughs> and we're also not switching to the metric system. Yeah. And we have the world's oldest person. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> she predicted that their soccer team would uh, be successful before they all started singing football's coming home. Yeah. Speaking to the mirror, she explained how the vegetable helps her make predictions by she throws them up in the air and then she reads the pattern that they make when they land on the ground. Okay. Uh, very similar to the uh, Chinese I Ching, if you're familiar yes, with that. Yes, I do. Or like reading tea leaves in the bottom of a cup. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, she says that she takes what she does very ser- very seriously, but she doesn't take herself very seriously. Okay. So, you know, she is the master of a legit art form, mm-hmm. but she still can cut up and have fun. Oh, good, good. <laughs> yes. Yes. The 63-year-old from Bath, Somerset, said that her forecasts are surprisingly accurate. She's usually about 80 to 90% accurate with her predictions. Wow, that's a good accuracy rate. Yeah, that really is. I go through my predictions each year and think, yup, that happened. Yup, that happened. Yup, that happened. <laughs> Let's is, not get cocky, lady. All is, right. That's what I like to do with my predictions as well. That's right. Whether they come true or not. Yeah, right. Yup, that happened. <laughs> One prediction for 2018 that Gemma got wrong was forecasting the ousting of Teresa, Teresa May. Oh. Which didn't happen, it but if coming. you remember, it came close yeah. when the prime minister faced a no confidence vote earlier this month. Yeah. I've heard they're still trying to get her out of there. Okay. I well, don't know. I mean, I'm not up on. Well, I guess it Britain. didn't happen in 2018. Right. But maybe yeah. it could still come true. And she's got like, a time frame yup, wrong. That happened. Yeah. Yup, that happened. <laughs> Occasionally, she gets one slightly off where she didn't quite read the pattern correctly, but uh, she's never that far off. Okay, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, if asked, that's true. <laughs> asked what her veil of Evesham asparagus spears have said will happen this year. She said that the country does not have to worry about leaving the EU because Brexit fears will prove largely unfounded. Okay. She also said that a recession will begin in the United States after their trade war on China ends, but it will spread across the world. That's, so, that's not a bold step out. I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I tell you what. There's been people predicting that for a little bit now. <laughs> President Trump's got 2019, but 2020, if that recession isn't over <laughs> right. and we're prosperous, he's, he's going to be in trouble. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and... More famous British brands will collapse and England's will have success at the 2019 Rugby World Cup. Okay. However, most importantly for vegetable lovers, Gemma said asparagus sales will hit an all-time high. Ooh. So, I suppose if you're uh, if you're looking to invest in some stocks, <laughs> asparagus is hot right now. Put everything I got into asparagus. According to the asparagus, <laughs> asparagus stocks are going to be huge this year. If if I, just my personal, this is just me, you know, if I could 
tell the future with asparagus. <laughs> Which you can. No, oh, yeah. I just have to learn the nuances. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would be the world's most prolific gambler. You know, I'd be like, who's winning the national championship? Who's winning the Super Bowl? Who's winning this? You know, who's winning the, like, you know, December 18th, you know, um, Portland Trailblazers, Houston Rockets game or whatever, yeah. you know, and you just bet and bet and bet, you know. Why do these people not do that? I don't know. I've always wanted to ask like a palm reader or somebody like, like, hey, why don't you turn this into, you know, like you're on the side of the road <laughs> yeah, so here. Like you're in a you're in a single wide trailer yeah, on the right. side of the highway. You got this big huge sign. <laughs> why are you not like parlaying this into like bets on on ga- you know games and horse races and stuff? You know, maybe it doesn't work that way. I don't know the dart arts of the asparagus <laughs> let's ask the asparagus like who's gonna win the national championship monday night that's right be, because this show will come out on tuesday and we can right. see if we were right or not yes well i'm gonna say are you about to toss <laughs> it asparagus who's gonna win uh the college football playoff between uh, alabama and clemson this yes. monday night at seven right, o'clock let's see Okay, that's that's my asparagus. <laughs> okay, that's a heavy asparagus. Yeah. Like a big bundle there. I believe that says ESPN's going to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I believe they're going to rake up <laughs> on it. So, roll tide. Roll tide. All right, yes, I'm sure that'll be – I don't, hope we didn't mojo it. You know, <laughs> I know. Do, do I, if we lose this game, I'm blaming it on the asparagus. Well, you know, according to Nicolas Cage, when you look into the future, the future changes because that's right. you looked at it. That's right, So. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I lean on Nicolas Cage, Cage's wisdom a lot in my life. I do too. So that makes sense. It's like Jesus after that is, uh, my dad. Okay. And Nicolas Cage. All right. Okay. No, no, wait. I'll take that back. Jesus, my dad, Master Splinter, Nicolas Cage. Okay. I'm a, I'm a little it's offended my, you didn't mention Nick Saban, but whatever. That's my top four. Okay. All right. Just saying. You didn't mention Nick, but all right. Okay. Well, I'm not a football coach. Okay. Well, I mean, he's got a good life advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite quote of his is, you either suffer the pain of discipline or you suffer the pain of disappointment. Huh. Ooh. That's, Wise. That's bold. Wise I mean, that's like a fortune cookie right there. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I think about that all the time when I'm like, you know, drinking Mountain Dew or whatever. And I'm like, I don't have no discipline in my life. And I'll be disappointed at some point for the poor, healthy life choices I'm making right now. Right. Because I don't have self-discipline. Not one of the fruits of the spirit that grows with me. Self-control, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying to cultivate it for like 40 years now. And just this, this is slow growing fruit. Let's move on here to outer space. Have you ever? Oh man! Have you ever accidentally called nine one one? I have not. I have, but I did go to a sleepover party at my friends Tim and Brandon's house when I was a kid. Okay, and they had some cousin. So he was a teenager. He was, you know, yeah, he's a troublemaker. He was a bad kid. Yeah, he smoked when the adults weren't looking and stuff. Oh yeah, one of those guys. <laughs> he called nine one one. Okay. 
Yeah, the cops show up. No, because he called it at a payphone. Oh, wow. But I'm sure they showed up. Yeah, to the payphone looking for some. <laughs> yeah, looking for somebody that was murdering somebody. A lot of people don't know that I was briefly in the smoothie business. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when we took over the place, uh, they had a phone that had like a lot of auto dials on it. Mm-hmm. And I was just going through the auto dials, seeing what they were, because some of them were like suppliers and things. And mm-hmm. I hit one button and it was like, Tuscaloosa EMS or EMS, <laughs> what yeah. E nine one one? You know what's your emergency? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I was just got this business here and was looking over the speed dial, and apparently nine one one speed dialed in because three buttons too much <laughs> it's to just put. Too much. Uh, and uh, I was like, so no worries. And they're like, well, we we're dispatching an officer. And I was like, no need to dispatch an officer. Everything's cool. There's mm-hmm. there's no problem at all. You know, I don't want to take up time from anyone who may be having a real emergency. And they're like, it's policy if we get a call to send an officer. Really? Out. Yeah. And so a little while later, an officer comes in. You're like, so sorry. Yeah. I'm like, look, man, I'm so sorry. And he was like, oh, it's cool. You know, just want to make sure everything's all right. You mind if I have a look around? And I'm like, because, <laughs> you know, he doesn't know. I could just be like lying to him <laughs> and have, have people some, tied up in the bathroom. Yeah, some 14-year-old girl tied up yeah, in the bathroom. Right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't check the bathroom. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i was just like okay all right yeah so yeah they'll come if you call them that's all i just want to tell people yeah i had to have that conversation whether you want them to or not yeah right um anyway so a dutch astronaut has decided has described how he accidentally contacted a, an american emergency services on 911 while in orbit above the earth i bet they didn't send an officer that time <laughs> Andre Coopers described the experience while speaking on a radio program about his missions and communications between the Earth, satellites, and astronauts orbiting the planet, according to the country's public broadcast, uh, which I cannot pronounce that name at all, Nederlandes Oremp Stitching. Nailed it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it. Um, Now, this only is true if you believe that earth is round and we have things orbiting around it so for all of our flat earth community out there this is certainly not true um cooper's explained that while trying to contact nasa's johnson space center in houston he missed an all-important number and accidentally called the u.s emergency services the 60 year old 60 seems a little old to be going to outer space well he's you know you got a lot of experience True, you know, so True. maybe that comes into I mean, I comes mean, in handy. Saying, said he said that to reach the center in Houston, orbiting astronauts have to dial nine for an outside line. I mean, it's like my <laughs> office, followed by O one one for an international line. But of course, doing so while floating around in space is trickier than from a desk on Earth. Real quick, so if you're dialing nine for an outside number, is the International Space Station big enough that you they can got, call different areas of the, of the station? I guess so. I mean, I've never been there. Me either. I know it's it's not a small thing, but I didn't think it was that big. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're like having a, and let me call the extension over on the Russian wing or whatever. <laughs> and do I need a little vodka? They can bring it over at dinner tonight. Um <laughs> Yeah, it says, uh, I made a mistake, and the next day I received an email message. Did you call 911? <laughs> His calm slip-up set off security alert at the Houston Center, he explained, with emergency staff uh, coming to check the room where the space station's line connected to Earth. I was a l- little disappointed they had not come up, he joked. Um he completed two space missions totaling 203 days. That's a long time. It is a long time. A long time. I've heard what goes on on the space station stays on the space station, too. <laughs> I mean, I've read a few articles about that before. It can get pretty wild up there, you know? Really? I mean, they're not doing scientific experiments all the time, right? I thought they were. No, nah, man. I thought it was, it was 24-7. You're be sleeping some down- or you're doing science experiments? Look, we all have a job, <laughs> and there is always time. Where it is like uh, nothing's going on. Like, hey, I've caught up on everything I right. need to catch up on. And so I'm just going to goof off for a little bit. <laughs> and so astronauts will goof off, you know? They'll, yeah. They'll goof off and do a lot of other crazy stuff. So <laughs> I'm just saying, it goes on. Uh, he suggested astronauts can reach terrestrial phones via satellites around 70% of the time. 
Um, he would have to deal with some technical hurdles when saying hello to friends on the ground, though. So he just like calls his buddies mm -hmm. in his downtime. Hey, what's going on? Guess where I'm at? I'm in space. <laughs> I'm still in space. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Did you go to your job today? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm in space. Uh, sometimes people would hang up because they thought I did not say anything. So later on, I started to talk as soon as I dialed the last number, he recalled. Because there's a little delay. Yeah, definitely yeah. a delay. Um, so... He uh, he compared manned space missions to those of historic explorers who crossed oceans, deserts, and punishing polar waste. People are scouts, he explained, which I agree. We mm -hmm. have an innate desire to explore in us, um, to find new places that can be useful to mankind, whether uh, thanks to their raw materials or new knowledge gained in the process. Hmm. Um, he quoted pioneering rocket scientists. Um, I can't even pronounce that name, too. Constantinin. Told, told there's somebody there's like a space nerd out here right now just cringing <laughs> uh to solkovsky who said the earth is the only cradle of humanity but we cannot live in a cradle forever hmm. it's pretty profound i'm gonna right. get that tattooed on my rib cage <laughs> so anyways the dude called 911 from space mighty impressive i was unaware that i, I thought you know there was some sort of like two-way radio system or something that they used mm -hmm. But I guess you can just pick up the phone and call. Well, yeah, something else because you know you need nine one one to get an outside line. Yeah, but you don't need to dial nine to get nine one one. Apparently, right? Right. That's true. Unless he dialed nine twice. Yeah, I don't by know. accident. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably just a slip up somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just satellites and stuff bouncing around off the ionosphere, and next thing you know, you're calling nine one one. But it'd be huge for prank calls. I tell you what. uh, now I don't want anybody to die or or get killed or murdered, but as a true crime junkie, I do look forward to the first murder in space. Oh yeah, you know. Are you saying it hadn't already happened? Has it happened? What happens in space stays in space, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I would think that. Okay, uh, I've read that Russia maybe they're kind of nebulous on how many people they've put in yeah. in space and how many have and come back died. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I would think as far as NASA and you know, the, most of the the main space agencies out there now, we got a pretty ha pretty good handle on who yeah. goes up and who comes down. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, there's still people paying attention to it. There's not as many as like the old days, right. When it was like huge news every time a rocket launched. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there's enough people watching now. We we got to stay on our p's and q's. But but I mean, when, stay woke. <laughs> once we start, and it's, who knows how long this will be in the future? I don't know if it'll. It probably. Likely, I don't think it will be our lifetimes. But when we do start terraforming Mars and sending people over there, and there's more and more and more people over there, yeah. and then our transports get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, somebody's going to come up missing. Yeah. No, yeah, that'll definitely happen. And then there's going to be a podcast called uh, Vanished in Space. <laughs> Lost in Space. <laughs> yeah. Already been a TV show called that and a movie, but yeah. <laughs> and yeah. a Netflix series. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, sure enough. Wow. It's not bad. I'm not up on my Netflix. You should check it out. I probably won't, but I will <laughs> tell you I, I will. Was just to say, I was just fixing to say, because I saw that Facebook post. That's right. You'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll look oh, at that, I but I won't see do that, it. But I never look at it. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. One of my really favorite hobbies, and this is like off the subject, but is for people to say, hey, John, have you seen this movie? And I have not seen it, but I'll say yes. And then I try to see how long I can keep the conversation going without knowing anything about the conversation. It's Just one, following movie cliches. The other guy I sent uh, that to, because I sent that to you, was Andrew, uh, Gabe's brother. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we worked together forever, and I would do it to him all the time. He's a big-time movie guy, <laughs> right. you know. So he'd be like, oh, man, have you seen this movie? I'm like, yeah, man. And I'd be like... And I could pick up enough clues that I could keep the conversation going, and it was just great. You know, he got to where he could tell when <laughs> yeah. I was doing it. But well, we probably like the first few times you do that, people are you know they want to be polite; they don't want to call you out right, right. away. Yeah, and so they're probably thinking, "Bless his heart, he don't remember what he <laughs> well, bought." <laughs> I, I don't want to give away all my secrets because I do it to people <laughs> all the time. But one of the things I'd be like, "Okay, now I don't know which movie is that." You know, mm -hmm. and then they'll say, Oh, it's the one with the dog that ran down. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I love that dog. That dog's great. And then they'll tell me another little snippet about it. And I'll just latch onto that. And then I'll take those conversations and use them in the future when other people ask me about the same movie. So. <laughs> and so it's just like, 
a lie that gets more and yes, more right, complex. Yes, right. I just and, admitted to lying to multiple people. <laughs> and before you know it, it's indistinguishable from the truth. Yes, right. Because the lie yes. gets better and better and better. <laughs> I I know entire plot lines of movies I've never seen. Like opening <laughs> character arcs and climax and ending to from never seeing it, just from having those conversations with people. And then I'm like, well, now I definitely don't now need, I to, don't see need to see it. Yeah. Because I know what happens. Yeah, I know all about it. So Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I'm probably going to quit with this one because we've been at this for a while. Me personally. Yeah. I got but, my uh, Florida man one left, and that's it. Yeah, I was going to say, the next one I had was Jury Awards $1.5 million to employees of Onion Head Devotee. Okay. Have I, you ever I don't even know what Onion Head is. I don't either. Let's yeah. find out together. A jury in U.S. District Court in Brooklyn has awarded $5.1 million to 10 workers who said that their health network employer had forced them to participate in group prayers and other religious activities as part of the onion head religion oh. in a case that was filed on their behalf by the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Mm. Well, I can't be doing that. You know. <laughs> yeah. In Equal Employment Opportunity Commission plaintiffs, Elizabeth, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to name all these people. <laughs> It uh, filed this suit and said that New York-based United Health Programs of America Incorporated and its parent company, Cost Containment Group Incorporated, which provided customer service on behalf of various insurance providers, had coerced employees to participate in ongoing religious activities since 2007. Wow. Including group prayers, as was mentioned, candle burning, and discussions of spiritual test. Ooh. The EEOC has said that religious practices were part of a belief system the defendant's family members created called Onion Head. It said employees who were told to wear Onion Head buttons, place Onion Head cards near their workstations, and only keep dim lighting in the workplace, none of which were work-related. I feel like the dim lighting could just be they were trying to save on their electric bill. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. that's necessarily no, we're turning it on a lot, y'all. <laughs> The EEOC said in a statement Thursday, the jury awarded $5.1 million in comp... <sighs> com- <laughs> Why is that word so hard for me to say? Compensatory. Compensatory. And punitive damages to the 10 individuals on Wednesday following a three-week trial. <laughs> the jury found the defendants had violated federal law by coercing employees to engage in religious practices, blah, blah, blah. In addition to the $5.1 million award, the EEOC said it will also seek injunctive relief against the company to prevent future violations of federal law and back pay to be awarded to Ms. Pabon for her wrongful termination, which will be determined by the U.S. District Judge Kayo A. Masumoto. Oh, so, okay. Basically, this company... They uh they forced ten of their employees to join a religion and do all this religion stuff as part of this onion head religion, and they got five point one million well, out of the deal. I looked up because I was compelled by the name Onion Head. <laughs> yes, it says it's taught and promoted through the Harnessing Happiness Foundation. Okay. Um, which acts as an unofficial church entity, entity uh, according to the foundation's website, which may or may not have been written by a really stoned teenager. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what is Onion Head, it's it. It's who is Onion Head. Onion Head is this incredibly pure, wise, and adorable character who teaches us how to name it, claim it, sounds a little Joel Osteen. <laughs> that does. <laughs> tame it and aim it. Um his motto is peel it, feel it, heal it. <laughs> in conclusion, and steal it. yeah, in conclusion, he's an onion who rhymes. Anyways, so they, they have this whole like tenet of like, it's like self help stuff or right. whatever. You know, I mean, it's basically Joel Osteen. Right. You can't be forcing employers to do, employees to do stuff like that. No. I mean, as a, the world's worst Christian that I am. <laughs> Even I recognize that, you know. I wouldn't say you're the world's worst Christian. Yeah, there's probably some that are a little more than me. I'm probably the worst Southern Baptist that there is. I'll go with that. I mean, Tomas Torquemada. Tor- wait, I was going to say that. Start that over. <laughs> Tomas Torquemada. Okay. He was uh, the leader of the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty He's tough. probably worse Christian. I would than call me. his Christianity into question. <laughs> you know? I it's mean, so bad. You don't you're judging. Calling, it's so bad you're yeah. calling his faith into question. Yeah, don't want to judge another man's faith, but still, <laughs> he did some really bad stuff. Yes, yeah. he did. But yeah, so I, I'm just saying, 
you don't need to be doing this. Onion head, that's not the way you need to grow your religion, all right? Mm-hmm. You do it by taking over pagan holidays, all right? <laughs> that's how Christianity that's did how it. That's how we did it, all right? <laughs> and yeah. now we're the, hey, we're the world's largest religion. Are we? Yeah, Christianity is number one. Is it? I thought, I thought the Muslims had the number A one A lot spot. of people say that, yeah. and you know what that is? That is all... Like, oh, is that the liberal media? <laughs> that's the liberal that's media. That's the daggum liberal <laughs> fake news media. Now, okay, the, granted, they are fast... You know, they were quickly rising. Yeah. But, you know, if you take all of Christianity and its various sects, some of which Christians will argue about whether right. they belong yeah. in the family or not. Well, if you're not church Christ. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. But basically, if you take all of them and all their offshoots, basically, you know, you believe in Christ. Then yeah, you believe in the deity of Christ. If you, if you call yourself a Christian, yeah. then I want to say no, there's number like— one. I think this. Uh, I think there's like two or three billion. Wow, so, yeah. pretty good. All yeah. right, I'll take it. I'll take. I was. <laughs> I was. I've been tricked by the fake news. <laughs> yeah, Trump was right. <laughs> oh, you know, Trump's basically a saint, anyways, according to Robert Jeffers. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyways, yeah, that's wild. I just you just can't force employees to do that. No, as a former employer, you know, mm-hmm. we had a lot of like religious conversations, and I tried to, you know, let everybody know, like, hey, you don't have to believe like I believe, mm-hmm. you know, like it's I'm not forcing you to do that. Here's where I stand on this issue, and let's hear where you stand on it, and we'll have a good conversation. You didn't force them to say the blessing before no, they no ate a free sandwich. No, 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 <laughs> no, didn't do that. Didn't do that. But uh, I prayed for all of them, whether they wanted it or not. So, yeah, did it on a regular basis. You're so, so intolerant, John. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Golly, there come Christians and all the, like, help you do around the world. Well, let's hear from Florida man. Okay, yeah. Pasco County man arrested after shoving pizza in father's face, deputies say. No word on if it had pineapple on it. All right. <laughs> A Pasco County man was arrested after shoving pizza in his father's face, deputies say. Um, Deputies with Pasco County Sheriff's Office said they arrested 33-year-old Robert Houston on a domestic battery charge. His father, the victim, told responding deputies he was walking his dog while Houston was waiting on the front porch for a pizza delivery. Then Houston entered the home. When Houston's father's entered, when his father entered, he was held down in a chair by the suspect. And the suspect was also shoving pizza in the victim's face, according to an affidavit. Hmm. Eventually, Houston got off his father and walked outside to wait on law enforcement. It's like, I just know I'm going to jail. So I might as well wait here. <laughs> uh, deputy said when they arrived, Houston walked towards them and said that he knew they were going to transport him to jail. Uh, a deputy asked Houston why he thought it, he was being taken to jail, and he admitted he threw pizza in his dad's face because he was upset that his dad helped give birth to him. What? Investigators wrote in the affidavit. <laughs> How dare you deliver me from my mother's womb? And that was the end of the article. Huh. I feel like it. I had a guy who worked for me, all right? Uh, he actually came to church with us on Easter. He had a mohawk, remember? Okay. He had this whole thing like uh, he 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 had a different outlook on life. I loved him, great guy. I mean, I hadn't talked to him in a month or two. I need to try to holler at him. But anyways, um, mm. I don't know if you're listening out there, but you know who you are. That uh, he never asked to be born, and that it was cruel that he was forced to live in this world <laughs> because you know, like he had, he he had no buy-in on it. You know, like he just had to be here. And uh, maybe it was that sort of situation, you know, like, how could you help conceive and bring me into this world of, you know, horribleness that it is? Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, I feel like it was something like that. I don't know if it would escalate to shoving pizza in my dad. I can't imagine doing that to my dad, you know, like unless it's like hitting on my mom or something, like beating on my mom yeah. that I would ever like get in a physical altercation with my dad. But if my son ever shoved pizza in my face, I would assume it's because he loved yeah, me. I'd be like, he knows thank how you. much I love yeah, pizza. Right. Thank you so much, little buddy. <laughs> you know, go get daddy another piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, go get daddy another piece. Had had Chuck E. Uh, Cheese for lunch yesterday, by the way. We had Chuck E. Cheese for lunch Thursday. It's been raining so much we all needed stuff to do outside of, you know, the house. <laughs> yeah. You know, that you just everybody's going to start crazy it has rained so much in alabama it has. it's wild it's wild and the black warrior river is it's crazy raging. yeah high right it is raging yes yes yeah pretty cool pretty cool <laughs> uh real quick 
uh, I, I, you know what? I Googled this just now. Okay. Uh, world's largest religions. Christianity is at the top with 2.4 billion. We're number one. <laughs> we are. We're number one. Islam is number two okay. with 1.8 billion. All right. We'd like to point out it is a an Abrahamic faith. That's true. So. <laughs> that is true, yes. <laughs> and then number three is the secular slash non-religious slash Onion agnostic head. slash Onion atheist. Head. Oh, oh, the non-believers are number well, at three. At 1.2 billion. Okay. So. I got to pump those numbers up. They've been trying hard on the internet. <laughs> they have been trying I mean, so hard. Really hard. They're, they're more evangelical than most Southern Baptists. They really are. That Maybe means. that's why they're number three. They're, they're moving up. But hey, you know what? Number three, that's the, that's the number two loser. That's right. So. Yeah. I mean, we're Alabama, and uh, Clemson is the the Islam is, is a nation of the Islamic religion. So, hey guys, it's me, Tiny, and I just wanted to cut in really quick and say this episode was recorded before the national championship was played. So, I guess if we're going to be fair here, Clemson would be the team that is comparable to Christianity, and Alabama would be Islam. Congratulations, Clemson! I haven't seen Alabama get spanked like that in. A decade. So, congratulations. All right, now back to your regularly scheduled program. And all you agnostics out there, you're like Notre Dame. Yeah, you're like Notre Dame, <laughs> which is really weird since they're a Catholic school, but whatever, you know. <laughs> Speaking of which, you know what the difference between Notre Dame and Lucky Charms is? Um, I do know it, but I'm going to let you tell the punchline. <laughs> One belongs in a bowl and the other don't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, like – uh Apparently, Notre Dame thinks conference championship games are a sin, and so they won't play in them. <laughs> <laughs> they won't join a conference, which, of course, they don't join a conference because they have a TV deal for their own school. Right. And I wouldn't either. That's not it's a dumb business move to share that money with anybody else. Right. But you would think with all that money, they could buy better players, you know? <laughs> you would think. You know, like, what's going on? Do we need to get Lou Holtz back so he knows, like, and tell him how to be shady or whatever? <laughs> People forget Lou Holtz coached at Arkansas. Alabama beat him in the Sugar Bowl, I think, 1979. They did, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he learned to cheat down with the big guys, <laughs> you know, for going up there. And it worked out good for him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Man. Okay, we're going to thank our sponsor, World Famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, for their support. Check them out at CajunCurl.com. You can order their spice and their Cajun Curl Cutter for potatoes right there on CajunCurl.com. Um, also, the number one spice to put on asparagus before you tell. <laughs> before you read the future. Before you tell the future. All right. <laughs> it was created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana. And it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, asparagus, tomatoes, anything else you can think of. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. Their spiral potato cutter is easy to use and it's easy to clean and it will allow you to make your own chips using Cajun Curl Spice. If you've never made your own homemade chips, you will never want chips out of a bag. The most disappointing thing about chips out of a bag is that the bag looks really full and it's like a quarter of the way full. Yes. And then they don't taste as good as homemade chips with Cajun Curl Spice on them. On their website, CajunCurl.com, you can not only order the Bayou Blended Spice, but you can find the chip and the chip cutter, but you'll also find recipes that are absolutely mind-blowing. You can locate your nearest retailer there or order your own. Um, if your local grocer doesn't carry World Famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, ask them to start stocking them. All of their products are made in the USA, so you not only you enjoy the taste of Cajun Curl, but you also feel patriotic while you enjoy your meal. It's all natural, it's low salt, it has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. Also, I should point out, because I forgot to read that line, that it is available here locally mm-hmm. at Vowels on Skyler Boulevard, Piggly Wiggly in Northport, and South Finest Meats. Um, world famous Cajun Curl by you Linda Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. CajunCurl.com. Check them out and use promo code EOP10, the number 10, to get a 10% discount. Because we ask that you use the spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. Boom. That's right. All right. For community news, we got a review. Oh, it's really? It's been a long time coming. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we got a new one. Wow. We didn't get 600 downloads on the last episode, right? You know what? Let me check that right I'm now. I'm pretty sure we didn't. I'm pretty sure. 
Let's see, clap, oh. clap, 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 type and type and type and let's see how that's my doing. typing noise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we did 393. Okay, so well, didn't reach my goal to post my Hitler pitch <laughs> or Hitler picture, Hitler, Hitler picture. picture. Let me check our Podbean feed. Oh, okay. See if we've got 200 like downloads on it. 100 and whatever. <laughs> We're also coming up on the anniversary of our only real negative review. That's which right. Which was written on January 30th by Big Buck Down. <laughs> Whoever Big Buck Down is out there. <laughs> so glad you came to see yeah. the light. Yeah. I wonder where he is. It. I would like to find him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that was also so early on oh, that yeah. you'd think it had to be somebody we knew. That's what I'm thinking, too. But, yeah. I, but I don't know who it is. They're afraid either. to face us. That's right. <laughs> they're That's hiding right. in the shadows like a coward because <laughs> they're not a man. <laughs> Our year-end wrap-up did 19 on Podbean. Okay. So All right, no just hit, over 400 no, downloads. No Hitler picture for y'all. <laughs> Sorry. So we got a review. But we got a review. And our review comes from PJ Batter. PJ Batter. Five stars. Ooh. This was left on December 18th of last year. All right. Uh, Tiny and John are very casual and welcoming with humor to boot. Listening to this podcast is like meeting up with old friends. Ooh. I'm thinking that's maybe old friends. Little typo. Yeah. But hey, you know what? I would love to be your old friend. As long <laughs> as you're not asking me to. I mean, I can hold your beer. I can hold your drink. I can hold your bag. Can't hold him. <laughs> Just can't hold your hand. If I told you you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> anyway, uh, listening to this podcast is like meeting up with hold friends, and we listen in on their conversation. So just sit a spell, take a load off, and listen to some interesting yet humorous events. All right. Thank you so much, PJ Batter. Absolutely. That was a very, very yeah. good review. We had been like a de- in like a drought of no reviews. <laughs> yes. And so you broke that. And we will be your hold friends till I will hold the you. wheels come off. Yeah. I'll hold you. I mean, I'm married and heterosexual, <laughs> but I'll hold you, you know. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean you can't hold somebody. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with male affection. You You're know, right. like we kind of gotten away from that in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with putting your arm around of a guy. Yeah. <laughs> as make- long as you do the, uh, like the hand clap. Yeah. So yeah, it's just the, little it's just the left arm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the Southern Baptists do it. Right, yeah. Like a side hug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's what you have well, it's a handshake. That, oh, yeah. That no, goes yeah. Into oh, the, yeah. The handshake pull the in. Yeah. Slap back. Yeah, that's yeah. standard yeah, guy yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's how that works. But yeah, you know, appreciate the review for real. I mean, if you're out there listening right now, I know mm-hmm. some of you are. Come on and listen. We, I mean, come on, leave a review. We get like 400 downloads a week and we don't have that many reviews. What are you doing? You know? <laughs> and you know what? As much as we love reviews, what we're really going to hit on this year is tell one person. Yeah. Right. Just one part. If you love the show, tell one person that yeah. you think will love it. If you hate somebody, yeah, right. tell somebody that you think will hate it as a practical joke. Yeah, right. Or you just know? so y'all can make fun of us together. But yeah. I will say. But tell one person. We all, all of us, all of us, everyone who is hearing my voice right now takes our phone with us to the bathroom. <laughs> all right. You're just sitting there for a few minutes. Just go in and type in a review for us while you're on the toilet. Toilet reviews. That's our other <laughs> line that we're hitting. You know? Toilet reviews. Yeah, just write your review while you're sitting on the toilet. You don't have to tell everybody you're doing it. If you want to, that's fine. If you're you like, want to mention that in the review. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, I'm right. just sitting here on the John, Yeah, and I'm going to review Talk about, John's podcast. <laughs> that's right, yes. Then that's fine. That'd be fine. But, I mean, just take one bathroom break out of your entire <laughs> life and write one review for us and rate us five stars. If you're yeah. not going to rate us five stars... Then maybe you just keep that to yourself, you know, yeah. like or just lie for us. Or how, how about that? Okay, I'm going to make this as easy as it can possibly be. If you don't want to take the time to type in a review, okay, yeah, just hit five stars. Yeah, just, just rate hit us. five stars. Just rate us. That's not bad. Yeah. I wonder how we get one of those like automatic, like, hey, rate this thing that pops up, like, oh, come on during an app. I don't know. That'd be really cool. We need if we to could talk do that. to the other John. Yeah, yeah, second he, he, John. He probably knows how to do yeah. it. Right. <laughs> second yeah. John. Second John. <laughs> Do you like we that? need to call him that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, second John. And then if we ever find another John friend, he can be third he can John. He be third John. Right. <laughs> and then if we get a fourth one, he'll be the revelator. You know? <laughs> Would that make you the gospel? Yeah, the I'm gospel the gospel. According I'm to original, John. you know? Gospel John. Gospel John. <laughs> 
but no, for real. Yeah. Like I said, if you're sitting on the toilet, just type in a few sentences that says we're awesome and, uh, leave us five star review or just leave us five stars mm-hmm. and go on about your life. Yeah. You know? and, and tell one person. Yeah. And tell definitely just let one person know, you know, somebody out there yeah. that would enjoy this or would it like to make fun of us mm-hmm. too. And just let them. And that's all you got to do. Yeah. That's all you got to do. You have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us no matter where you get us, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Stitcher, Podcast Republic. We're on them all. Yeah, we're everywhere. If you would like to email the show, you can get us at earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to tweet at us, we can tweet. You never know. We are at underscore Earth Oddity. Yep. Underscore Earth Oddity just so happens to be our Instagram That's account right. as well. Yeah, I feel a picture coming off. <laughs> Sometimes we post pictures. I'm feeling a picture Sometimes coming off. Sometimes we don't. The only way you're going to know is if you follow That's us. That's right. And we also have a phone number. What's that phone number, John? Oh, man. It is 662-493-2059. So that's 662-493-2059. One more time for the people in the back. Yeah. 662-493-2059. We hope everybody has an excellent week and an excellent 2019 Earth Oddity for the Fringe Radio Network signing off. Bye. Love y'all. Later. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening.